Hi, welcome to my newest free pattern video. This is my new shawl. I've called it the Dappled Light Shawl, a rectangular shawl, and it uses two colors and creates five stripes. In this video, I will teach you how to knit this shawl. I'll teach you how to knit the lace stitch and give you all the information on materials and gauge and how to choose your yarn. But if you want the whole written pattern, it'll be just $2 in my shop. So you can either follow this video and write it down yourself or screenshot it, or you can get the PDF with photo tutorials in my Etsy shop. When it comes to the materials for this shawl, you will need a set of US 6 4mm needles and I recommend a circular pair that is at least 24 inches long or whatever size needle gives you the correct gauge. Although you will be working this project flat, I recommend circular needles because you'll have a ton of stitches and it's easier to fit all of them on circular needles. That being said, you could also use long straight needles if you prefer that. In terms of yarn, you will need two colors of fingering weight yarn. For color A, you'll need 705 yards or 644 meters. Color B, you'll need 370 yards or 338 meters. For me, color A is the pink and color B is the cream. My sample here uses an indie dyed yarn called Pachinku in their Tawa base, which is 70% merino, 30% mulberry silk, and has about 436 yards per 100 grams. And the pink here is color Petal, and the color B here is their natural color. When it comes to choosing yarn, you can choose any yarn that will match gauge or at least get very close to matching gauge. An easy way to choose a similar yarn is to choose something with similar yardage or meterage to weight as the sample, which is 100 grams. The sample is 436 yards, 400 meters per 100 grams, so you want something close to that. I recommend choosing a yarn that is within maximum of 20 to 30 yards, 18 to 27 meters of the sample. And I suggest avoiding cotton yarn because it could make the shawl very heavy and avoiding pure alpaca or mostly alpaca yarn because it will just continue to stretch forever. Instead, try yarn with wool or acrylic content. If you can find anything with silk in it, that will give it a lovely drape, just like the sample, but it's not a necessity. So I went through and found some yarns from popular websites that have similar yardage or meterage to the sample. Now, big disclaimer, I have not used any of these yarns to make this shawl. I cannot guarantee they will work. Everyone has different tension, so the only way to guarantee it for yourself is to swatch. That being said, here are some yarns I found that have a similar approximate yardage or meterage per 100 grams. Many of these are more affordable options and some are self-striping and others are solid colors. You can go ahead and pause and write down these options if you're interested. So these are subject to change throughout the years, but currently these are the options that I have been able to find. In terms of other materials, you will need some stitch markers and a yarn needle. This shawl comes in one size. If you match gauge, it will end up being 19.25 inches, which is 49 centimeters wide, by 72 inches, 183 centimeters long. When it comes to the gauge for this shawl, you'll want to work a gauge swatch flat and block it the same way that you intend to block your whole shawl. So if you intend to wash your shawl at the end, you'll also want to wash your gauge swatch in the same way so that the gauge ends up being the same measurement. And you also want your swatch to be fairly large so that you can get a good measurement I recommend at least five to six inches square and I have a video on my tips for swatching if you are interested in that here So as you can see this shawl has two different stitches It has garter and it has this lace pattern here when it comes to garter the gauge for that is 20 stitches by 29 rows equals four inches or 10 centimeters and the lace stitch is 24 stitches by 29 rows gives you four inches or 10 centimeters for your gauge swatch i would just recommend casting on a multiple of four stitches for your lace and then casting on however many stitches for your garter and i would just work them together on the same swatch make it big enough work a long enough length and then block them together so that you see how they interact when you have them all in the same piece instead of knitting a swatch for the lace and then another swatch for the garter. Just do them all in the same swatch. 
So after you block your swatch, you're gonna have to measure out your gauge for both. Now it's possible for the row gauge to be slightly different between your garter and your lace. That's okay. If your gauge is off by, you know, one or two rows, don't worry. You can always fudge the difference when blocking your piece in the end because lace is so malleable. And I have the lace stitch written out here. You'll need to cast on a multiple of four for your swatch. And then it's a three row repeat. I'm now gonna walk you through a tutorial on how to work the lace stitch. For this stitch, you'll need to cast on a multiple of four stitches and it is a three row repeat. So for your swatch, I would definitely recommend knitting one row first to kind of set up your swatch because your first row is a yarn over purl four together repeat and it's very, very difficult to do a purl four together if the row before it was not knit loosely. So go ahead and work a setup row where you just knit across and you wanna knit loosely. So you just knit normally like you would but just don't pull tight, just be really loose as you're knitting. So now that we have worked our loose setup row, we can get into the actual stitch. So we're going to work a repeat of a yarn over followed by a purl four together. So go ahead and bring your yarn to the front of your work. Now this might feel a little bit weird, but just go ahead and bring the working yarn over your right hand needle from front to back to create a yarn over. And now we're going to work the purl four together. So these next four stitches, you're going to go into the front loop of them from right to left, the same way that you would to purl one stitch, but you're going to go into all four of them. So I like to pull down a little bit on my project and you'll probably wanna keep a finger on this loop here on your right hand needle so it doesn't fall off. And I like to pull down on the stitches on my left hand needle with my thumb and finger, go into them, all four of them, as if to purl. See that? I went into the front loops of all four of them as if to purl. So yarn over the right hand needle from front to back and kind of pull that through. Slide those four off your left hand needle and you should just have one loop where there were four. So I'll show that to you again. So we're going to go ahead and yarn over your yarn should still be in the front of your work and you're going to bring the yarn over the right hand needle from front to back like that and now we're going to go into the next four stitches as if to purl them and purl them together so remember to keep this yarn over in place i like to pull down on these next four stitches here on my left hand needle bring the needle from right to left into the front loop of the next four stitches like that Pull it through and then yarn over from front to back again and pull a loop through. It might be a little bit difficult, but if you keep the tension right, it should work. And then you can slide those four stitches off the left hand needle and there you have it. You've worked another repeat. So go ahead and do that across the whole row and I'll meet you back here for row two. If that was too difficult, it might have been because your first setup row was not knit loose enough. You really have to knit that row loose or it's gonna be nearly impossible to work a purl four. So here's our entire row. We can go ahead and flip our work and you're ready to work row two. So for row two, we need to work a knit one followed by a knit one, purl one, knit one into the previous yarn over. That may sound really challenging, but trust me, I'll help you work it out. We have to knit the first stitch. Go ahead and knit it. And now we've gotten to the yarn over from the previous row. And this is the one that you have to work a knit one, purl one, knit one into. If you've never done it before, it's gonna sound really confusing, but I'll show you how to do it. So go in and go ahead and knit the stitch, but don't drop it from your left hand needle. So go through and we've knit it. And now bring the yarn in between your needles to the front, holding it in the front like this, go into the same yarn over stitch to purl it. So from right to left, Pull through, but don't drop it off your left hand needle. Bring the yarn back in between your needles to the back of your work. And you're going to knit it one final time. So go into it to knit it. And now you can slide it off of your left hand needle. So you've just created these three stitches from one. So this is gonna return your stitch count back to normal. And now we just repeat that. So knit one. And now we can work the knit one, purl one, knit one. So again, go into that next stitch and knit it, but don't drop it off your left hand needle. 
bring the yarn in between your needles to the front. Go ahead and purl it. But again, don't drop it off your left hand needle. Yarn back in between your needles to the back and then knit it one final time. Drop it off your left hand needle and you've created these three stitches. So you're just gonna do that for the whole entire row. And then just to show you kind of the cheat way of doing it without having to move the working yarn around a ton. So you go into the yarn over and you knit one, but you don't take it off your left hand needle, right? And then you bring your right hand needle behind your working yarn, underneath this yarn over, and from back to front, go into the front, okay? And then you're gonna take your working yarn and go around the right hand needle from front to back and then pull that through the yarn over again and then knit one and you can finally slide it off your left hand needle. So again, when you get to that yarn over, I'll show you again, you're going to knit one, but don't slide it off your left hand needle. Instead, take your right hand needle, go behind the working yarn, through the yarn over from back to front and then wrap the working yarn around the right hand needle from front to back pull it through from front to back again, through that yarn over, knit one, slide off. There you go. Turn your work. And for row three, this is the really easy one. Row three, you're just going to knit across, but do it loosely. Remember how we needed that for our purl four row? So go ahead and knit across for row three, but do it loosely. It's gonna feel a little bit weird with how we did the knit one, purl one, knit one into our last yarn over. So it may look a little bit weird, but just go ahead and knit across loosely. So after working the stitch for a while, it should start to look something like this. And each little clump here makes up your purl four together. To begin the dappled light shawl pattern, cast on 106 stitches. For the sake of time, I will not be showing you how to cast on. You can find my tutorial for that here. I used a long tail cast on, but you can do any cast on you want that is stretchy enough for a shawl. For rows one through seven, you're just going to knit across. So go ahead and work those seven rows and I'll meet you back here for row eight. And for row eight, you will need six stitch markers that fit on your needles. So you can go ahead and knit six stitches. And then you wanna place a marker on your right hand needle and then go ahead and knit 12. And then you can place a marker on your right hand needle. Then you're going to knit 17. And then go ahead and place a marker on your right hand needle. And then again, you're gonna knit 36 stitches. Then place a marker on your right hand needle. Then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna knit 17, place a marker, knit 12, place a marker, and finally knit six. So your row should look something like this with markers dividing up your stitches. And you do this to separate sections of garter from sections of lace. For row nine, you're gonna go ahead and knit across, but you wanna do it loosely. And every time you get to a marker, you're just going to slip the marker from the left hand needle to your right hand needle. So go ahead and work row nine and I'll meet you here for row 10. So for row 10, you're going to knit to the next marker, slip the marker, then work a yarn over, purl four together, repeat until the next marker, knit to the next marker, and then work that same yarn over, purl four together to the next marker, knit to the next marker, work that yarn over, purl four to the next marker, and then finally knit to the end. So that might sound like a lot, but really you're just alternating garter sections and lace sections. So we're gonna break it down. Go ahead and knit to the next marker, which is just these first six stitches here. Then you're going to slip the marker. So move it from the left hand needle to the right hand needle. Then we're going to repeat a yarn over followed by a purl four together until you reach the next marker. So go ahead and bring the yarn in between your needles to the front of your work. Work a yarn over, so bring the yarn over the right needle from front to back, and then we're going to purl four together. So we've already kind of gone over this, but pull the next few stitches down a little bit. Bring your right hand needle into those next four stitches from right to left as if to purl them, and then you just purl them. So yarn over, pull the yarn through to create a stitch and slide those four stitches off your needle. And you're just gonna repeat that. So yarn over, bring the yarn from front to back, go into the next four stitches as if to purl. And this is why you knit the last row loosely to make this easier. 
yarn over and pull through a stitch, slide off. So go ahead and repeat that until you reach the next marker, which should be just one more repeat. And then go ahead and slip the marker from your left hand needle to your right needle. Bring the yarn in between your needles to the back and then you're going to knit to the next marker. So go ahead and do that. And then you're going to slip the marker again. So go ahead and take it from your left hand needle to your right hand needle. And we're gonna do that lace section again. So bring your yarn in between your needles to the front. Go ahead and yarn over and purl four together. And just repeat that to the next marker. And when you get to the end of that section, you're going to slip the marker from the left hand needle to the right hand needle. Bring your yarn around to the back and go ahead and knit to the next marker. And again, go ahead and slip that marker, bring your yarn in between your needles for the next section, and we're gonna work one final lace section. So go ahead and yarn over, purl four, and repeat that to the next marker. Go ahead and slip the marker from your left needle to your right, bring the yarn around to the back, and knit to the end. That was row 10. Go ahead and turn your work. So for row 11, we're gonna do the same sections of garter and lace. Here's what it looks like written out. Pause that and write down if you want to, and I'll show you how to work it. So we're going to knit to the next marker. So that's just these first six stitches here. Then you're going to go ahead and slip the marker from your left needle to your right. So I've already shown you how to do this, but you're going to repeat a knit one, followed by a knit one, purl one, knit one into the yarn over. So you're going to go ahead and knit the first stitch. And now we're going to work that knit one, purl one, knit one into this yarn over. So all three of those stitches are going to be made out of this one stitch here. You go ahead and knit a stitch, but don't take it off your left hand needle. Now you can bring your yarn in between your needles to the front and you're going to purl one. So into that stitch from right to left, purl it, but don't drop it off your left hand needle. Bring your yarn around to the back and knit it. And this time you can take it off your left hand needle. So there you have it. You've created a knit, a purl, and a knit all into one stitch. And I'll show that to you one more time using the faster method where you don't have to move your yarn from front to the back of your work. So you knit one, but don't slide it off your left hand needle. And then you take your right hand needle behind the working yarn and through the yarn over from back to front. And then you're just gonna yarn over so from front to back like that, pull that through the yarn over and there you go. Then you can knit one and do that again. So knit one, bring your right hand needle behind your working yarn through the yarn over from the previous row. So from back to front, then you can wrap this working yarn around your right hand needle from front to back. And again, pull that through that previous yarn over. Knit one, slide off, and you're done. And you can slip that marker. And you're basically just repeating sections. So this next section is garter. So go ahead and knit every stitch to the next marker. Slip the marker from right to left, and then go ahead and work your lace repeat. So knit one, followed by knit one, purl one, knit one into the yarn over. So then when you get to the marker, you slip it, and then you work another section of garter. So you just knit to the next marker. And then when you get to the next marker, you just slip it, and work that lace section again. Then you slip the next marker and you just knit to the end. Go ahead and turn your work. And row 12 is the easiest because you're just going to knit across the whole row loosely, slipping each marker as you come to it. Now the part that's most important is to knit the lace sections loosely, but I just kind of knit the whole row loosely. And once you finish row 12, that's kind of it. There are five stripes in the shawl and each stripe is just a number of repeats of those three rows that I just showed you. And then you're going to repeat rows 10 through 12 an additional 22 times for a total of 66 rows. And then for row 79, repeat row 10, and for row 80, repeat row 11. And then you're ready to start stripe two and switch to color B. So you'll wanna cut color A and leave a tail long enough to weave in later. Go ahead and pick up color B and then for stripe two, row one, you're going to knit across loosely. Row two, which is your right side row, you're going to work your yarn over, purl four together row. For row three, you'll work your knit one, purl one, knit one into the yarn over row. Row four, you're going to knit across loosely, slipping the marker as you come to them. 
repeat rows two through four an additional 28 times for a total of 84 rows. And for row 89, repeat row two. For row 90, repeat row three. So you can go ahead and cut your color B yarn, leaving a tail to weave in later. Go ahead and pick up color A, and you're ready for stripe three. And then for stripe three, using color A, row one, you'll knit across loosely. Row two, which is your right side row again, you're going to work a yarn over, purl four together row. Row three is your knit one, purl one, knit one into the yarn over row. Row four, you're going to knit across loosely, slipping the marker as you come to them. And you're just going to repeat rows two through four an additional 58 times for a total of 174 rows. And then for row 179, repeat row two. And for row 180, repeat row three. And you're ready to move on to stripe four. And stripe four is the same as stripe two. So you're just gonna stop using color A, cut a tail for it, and go ahead and pick up color B. And then for stripe four, using color B, row one, you're going to knit across loosely. Row two, which is your right side row, you're going to work a yarn over, purl four together row. And for row three, you're going to work your knit one, purl one, knit one into the yarn over row. In row four, again, you're just going to knit across loosely, slipping the marker as you come to them. And just go ahead and repeat rows two through four an additional 28 times for a total of 84 rows. And for row 89, repeat row two. And for row 90, repeat row three. And then cut that yarn, leave a tail to weave in, and go ahead and pick up color A for your final stripe, number five. And then when it comes to stripe five, using color A for a final time, row one, knit across loosely. Row two, which is your right side row, is your yarn over, purl four together row. Row three is your knit one, purl one, knit one into the yarn over row. Row four, knit across loosely again, slipping the markers as you come to them. And go ahead and repeat rows two through four an additional 22 times for a total of 66 rows. And then row 71, repeat row two, row 72, repeat row three. And then for rows 73 through 81, you're going to knit across. And then you can go ahead and bind off loosely. You can go ahead and find my bind off tutorial here. Then I would suggest blocking your shawl in the same way that you blocked your gauge. For example, I soaked mine in water for a little bit and then I squeezed the water out gently and I laid mine out. I have some foam blocking mats and it was too long so I just used a towel for the rest. I used some pin blockers but you can use really any kind of pins that will help stick it to whatever you're blocking it on. And I just kind of pinned it out to the right size that it should be based on the measurements of the pattern and that will only work if you matched gauge. So I don't have anything fancy, I just used a towel and some foam mats, pinned it out, let it dry overnight and now I have my shawl. So the only thing left to do is to weave in your ends and then you're done. And I will show you how I do that on mine. I really don't do anything fancy. I don't believe that there is one right way to do it. I definitely have some tips and tricks, but I don't believe that there's just one way to do it. So I go ahead and I take the tail of one of my yarns from when I changed my colors and I go ahead and I, I thread it through a yarn needle. You want to avoid going straight horizontal. You want to go a little bit vertical or a little bit diagonal to make it, you know, a little bit more secure. I think most knitters just kind of fudge it and just go with what looks fairly minimal. So my goal is to make it over here to the lace stitches because I want to weave it in there. I think that will hide it a little bit better. So I'm going to follow some of these stitches over there. So I'm just going to follow the pink. So I'm just going to go through here because that follows the one stitch. And then I'm going to follow this line here. So this line I know goes underneath this stitch like that and back down through this loop. See how we basically just doubled that stitch. It's just the same exact thing. It just is a little bit thicker now. And I'm just going to do that until I get to my lace stitches. Don't want to pull it too tight. But this is part of the reason that I do it after blocking is because the stitches have relaxed. 
and if I follow the stitches and try and keep the tension the same as them, then it should blend in a little bit easier. And there we go. We have worked across our garter and now we've gotten to our lace. So I'm going to do a few more different moves just to kind of hide it up here and add a little bit of verticality to it. I'm going to go through there. I'm just going to go through a couple of these stitches, which is part of our purl four together. There we go. Go up through here. Go through a few more of these stitches. And now I'm going to do probably my final bit and I'm just going to go back the other direction, hooking through a different stitch. And I split one of those stitches on the bottom. And I actually kind of like to do that on occasion, like one or two stitches while I'm weaving in an end, I will like to split a stitch and pull the yarn through because I find that that keeps it from moving a little bit better. So then I just kind of like tug on it a little bit to get it to kind of just sit there. And then I cut it fairly close. So there you have it. It is right there. You can see it and we've woven it in, but you can't really tell that much from the other side. You can see here, this is a little bit thicker, but it's not very noticeable. So because this is such a loose knit piece, weaving in your ends does stand out a little bit. I don't find it to be too noticeable. So then I'm just going to virtually repeat that with the other color going across here and hiding it somewhere in this little cluster here. And you just do something similar the whole way. And that's how I weave in my ends. Again, there's no one correct way to do this. Every time I do it, it changes. The way I do it here will be slightly different than how I did it up here. How I do it in the garter down here will be slightly different than how I do it anywhere else. It's not something to stress about. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you start wearing your project, you're really not going to remember where you put it for the most part. And other people, especially non-knitters, are not going to notice. That's all I have for you. That is my free pattern for you today. It is the Dappled Light Shawl. And again, all the instructions for the shawl are written in this video. But if you'd like a PDF to print out, you can find that in my shop for just $2. I will include some photo tutorials and things like that in it as well. I hope you guys like this pattern. If you do, I would love to hear about it in the comments. If you guys do enjoy the pattern, please give this video a like and follow for more. I will be releasing more free patterns on my YouTube channel in the near future, so stay tuned.